Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, um, we're, we're back here. We're doing Know Your Enemy. Know Your Enemy has a brand new logo. Um, you, uh, you object to the BS Navy speak. Hey, um, too bad. <laughs> don't, don't y'all ride on ships too? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, Know Your Enemy. Uh, we have a brand new Know Your Enemy logo and, uh, branding. I like it. Does everyone I else like it? Like it? I like it. Um, this is, this is five, all. five fictitious sloop points for anyone that can tell me what the uh, background is behind the logo. Uh, for those of you watching the YouTube video, that is five fictitious sloop points. Can I guess? No, you know, okay. you already know. <laughs> I told you already. Actually, I think you knew. I don't think I had to tell you. I think you at least guessed it. First cannon battery. Well, not not the 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 picture behind the logo, Nomad. Not not the actual cannon itself. Uh, oh, I, all right, oh, I, Kyle. Well, you, this is yeah, well, the uh, you you. I'm sorry. You go ahead. I say while while he's um, thinking about that, we'll get right we'll get right into it, Jared. So it's it's been a long time, Jared, but it is time to know. No. No, no, no. I was, I was shaking my head at Nomad. Sorry. Go. All right. It is time to know your enemy. Know your enemy, the Notre Dame fighting Irish. Kyle, what has been a long, long summer and spring. Wasteland. And, 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 and winter. Um, Kyle, it felt like a... How many, how many years did Moses spend in the desert? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not up on my, on my Bible. Uh, I, I prefer nomads here. It's been 84 years. 40 <laughs> years, or it's 84 years, or it's 85 yards. It's been a long journey through. It's been a, nomad, that, that's your, that's your hint for the picture behind the cannon. <laughs> it's been 85 yards since... Uh, uh, so it's been right, a long, it's been a long, long wasteland, uh, but we're here. It's game week. Yes, it is game Ohio week. State. It is Notre Dame. It is Ohio state. Here we are. Yeah. And let's get right into it. So I think, I think Jared, you, you summed it up best here at the, at the, our show notes here, Brian Kelly out, Marcus Freeman in. Let's talk about, let's talk about Notre Dame here. So some changes with Notre Dame during the off season here. They got a new offensive coordinator. Um, well, not new, I'm sorry. Um, their offensive coordinator, Tommy Rees, decides to stay instead of hop, hopping off and going with uh, with Brian Kelly to LSU. It would be noted that one, Brian Kelly, it was, I mean, it was Brian Kelly's offense, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's sort of like, you know, they retained their offensive coordinator, sort of. You know what I mean? Like, sort of. Because Brian Kelly was also, you know, a huge piece of that offensive coordination. Um, and it also needs to be said that Tommy Reese was invited um, to LSU. Brian Kelly wanted him. Mm -hmm. Tommy Reese decided to stay in Notre Dame. So just just for the record... Like Brian Kelly liked him. Brian Kelly wanted him. It's not like he was just left behind. He made the decision to stay at Notre Dame, yep. which I think probably says something about either Marcus Freeman or Brian Kelly. <laughs> yeah, maybe both. Maybe both. Maybe both. Uh, big change that you'll you'll notice here uh, that Notre Dame Notre Dame will be starting Tyler Buckner. Uh, yep. He played it. He he played in a few games uh, last year. I think he had. Uh, I'm trying to remember. He not not much. Like he had like under 300 yards passing, around 300 yards rushing, just in mop up duty. Uh, definitely a mobile type of quarterback. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. I think I think you'll see him trying to get out of the pocket, make a lot of plays here. But I mean, that's 
it's, it's a big ask for a, your first collegiate start. You're coming into the horseshoe. It's a night game. It's, yep. It's a lot to ask for, for a um, second year quarterback. Yeah. Uh, his recruiting profile and he's a red shirt freshman. Um, his recruit, I believe, I think they redshirted him. I'm pretty sure. And then we got game action. I don't think he got enough game action to burn the red shirt. So, um, yeah. so regardless, he's a second year player, right? Um, so recruiting profile looks like this. Uh, top 100 player in the class. Um, top 10 quarterback. If you look at the 24 seven sports proper ranking, uh, actually just outside the top 10, number 11 in the composite ranking. Uh, one of the top. Uh, five or seven, depending on if we're going by, you know, which one we're going by, uh, overall player from the state of California. So a high four star, right? A pretty high yeah. four star, talented player, very talented. But uh, as Kyle said, um, might be a bit more. How do I, how do you, how do you want to say this? A little bit more prone to running than Notre Dame's had. God, when was the last time Notre Dame had a, had a running quarterback? Wasn't CJ a high four star as well from California? Yeah, CJ's a year older, and I think he was, I forget what CJ's uh, ranking was, but I want to say it was higher than 91 and position 10. If you want to look that up for us, Nomad, that would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, he I'm pretty was, sure. Oh, he Kyle's was got a, it. He was a hub even higher he was 42nd yeah four star so he was like right on the cusp there yeah well i, I think it's literally i think 24 7 their proper rankings anyway cuts it off at 32 i believe they have i think so i don't don't quote you me are, on that you are right well, i think that's what they do they essentially say future first round draft pick i think that's how they make that delineation so since there are 32 first round picks, they designate 32 five stars. Makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely interested to see how Tyler is going, going to try to play. Is he going to get rattled in the pocket? Really? And of course, the biggest thing in Buckeye Nation's mind, how is the defense going to be this year? Are we going to be able to get enough pressure on the quarterback to make him make mistakes? Are we going to be able to get tackle for losses are we going to get more sacks this year it's it's time to find out here yeah and you know the, but, the good news if you're tyler buckner is that um notre dame is returning all five all five of their offensive linemen their offensive linemen did struggle a bit last year at times uh but that's because they were a very young unit last year so you know, that sort of you struggle in 2021 a bit because the team is because so, the offensive line unit is so young and so um, inexperienced. The good news is, is that since they were so young, it's kind of like Ohio State's defense this year, right? Because they were so young, they basically almost all of them come back. Yeah. And you look at their inter especially their interior graduate, senior graduate, very, very experienced. And then on the outsides, they have two sophomores that's starting. But you do the, the big question mark is uh, with one of the guards, uh, Jared yeah. Patterson. Yeah, that that Still. graduating senior uh, mm, probably yeah. not going to play. Most likely, he's still listed as questionable. Uh, last time I've been hearing, he's still trying to loosen up, trying to see if it's going to work. And I mean, if you're at this point and you're still trying to loosen up, trying to see if it's going to work, it's probably not going to work. Unless there's smoke screening, which is possible. Okay. Unless they're lying, which unless there's smoke screening. Um, the college football is not like the NFL, because even before the NFL, like semi-officially embraced gambling, be, make no mistake, the fact that the NFL had such strict rules about reporting injuries was because of gambling. Um, mm -hmm. NCAA doesn't have any rules in regards to revealing injuries. So they could be completely 100% lying here. He could be a lot more ready to go than we realize. But I'm also 
kind of like I, I, I sort of laid out a conspiracy theory there, and I honestly don't believe it. Um, no. I don't think we see it would be my assumption at this point, because they said he was questionable for Ohio State when he first or right after he first got hurt weeks ago. Yep. Um, and those and those are one of the things I said too. Like, it's really odd that they announced that he's questionable that that far out, and it's yeah. still listed as questionable. I'd be surprised yeah. if he if he hit the um got on the field to play. Yeah, you but aren't Jared, questionable for two or three weeks, and then, mm -hmm. yeah. But Jared, as a as a new young and experienced quarterback, who's who's usually one of your best friends? Uh, your left tackle. Well, yes, your left tackle. <laughs> but as far as your weapons. Your running back. I'm going to say your tight end. <laughs> I'm going to say the tight end, Jared. I just, I'm going to say the tight end. Exactly. I, For those dump passes, those quick passes. And you, you got you got a first rounder in Michael Mayer. Man, that's that's a huge target. He's, what, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. And um, what was it here you wrote down? Um, broke both Notre Dame single season tight end records last year in both yardage and touchdowns. And I mean, it really should be noted that Notre Dame has an amazing lineage of tight ends. So breaking tight end records at Notre Dame is saying something. Um, yes. Notre Dame is um, if you if I uh, open the pick six preview guide back up. And we look through the first and second team All-Americans, there are two Notre Dame players. Um, one is uh the aforementioned offensive lineman who we don't expect to play which is obviously very unfortunate for notre dame he's their lone first team all-american um their second team all-american they're uh they're again their lone second team all-american on the offense by the way i uh actually i don't think they have any on the defense they do not so yeah their lone second team um their lone second team All-American is tight end Michael Mayer. Um, and for the record, and no no offense to Brock Bowers at Georgia, literally no offense. I think he's tremendous. I'll take Michael Mayer's. Yeah, absolutely. I keep By the way, I keep pluralizing his last name. It's Michael Mayer. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, <laughs> Michael, because it's me, right? Um, of course. Of course. So is it... Never year of the wide receiver at Notre Dame. Now they've had some good wide receivers, but it is always year of the tight end there. It is. Hey, Oracle, how you doing? A la Iowa 2017. Yeah, uh, hold on to that thought for me. No matter, can you take <laughs> that thought and put it in your back pocket for me? Thanks. All right. Um, man, I've, I've, I'm drawing a blank on his name. They're, they're also um, down one of their wide receivers too, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. Um, they're also uh, down one of their uh, running backs. Um, the um, they don't have a, they have a similar issue as Ohio State right now. They don't have a ton of scholarship running backs on the roster. Um, I heard someone out there be like, "Oh, you want to? What Notre Dame needs to do is match what Michigan did and just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball." Which, by the way, I would try. If I was Notre Dame, I'd try it inexperienced quarterback um great offensive line decent enough running backs i'd try it um now if jarrett patterson doesn't play that 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 puts a bit of a damper on on that plan um mm -hmm. but also having a lack of depth at running back right now uh puts a bit of a damper on that plan as well Nomad says you hope they do. Well, um, yeah, I mean, go for it, right? Um, I have a lot more faith in Ohio State's defense this year, having not even seen them. <laughs> I'm I've bought into the hype. I've totally bought in on the hype. Let's let's see what happens. Um Let's see what happens. But the defensive line, at the very least, the Ohio State defensive line has a, a very tough job ahead of them, as do the linebackers from a coverage standpoint um, with uh, Michael Mayer. 
Mm-hmm. So or, I, th- I think you're I think you're going to see a lot of Michael Mayer versus um versus Steel Chambers situations. If if not that, then they I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure. Of course, that being hmm, let me back up. You see a lot of zone defense out of the out of the new scheme, I think. So it might not mm-hmm. be necessarily a one on one situation. Um, and even when you do, you, you could also see it be um, the forward safety a lot, whoever that might end up being. Um, so, you know, you're sort of linebacker slash safety um, position we'll probably end up doing that a lot as well. Just sort of depends upon the on the call. Right. Yep. You want to see the DEs hit home. Uh, Zach. I also need you to take that thought and put it in your back pocket for a second. Can you do that for me? <laughs> Nomad and Zach, you each have a thought that you need to keep in your back pocket. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the Notre Dame defense here. They did, they did have um, their all American safety, Brandon Joseph um, transferred in from Northwestern. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's a, that's a big plus for Notre Dame. We got to keep an eye out for as well. Yeah. They, they, they lost got... a very talented safety to the draft. So yep. this is sort of an immediate plug they, and play for them. They're hoping at least. But there, there's definitely a couple of guys you got to really, really um, look out for. Um, Isaiah uh, Foskey, uh, one of the um, one of the be- had one of the best sacks for last year. Finished with 11. Uh, I think he was in the top 10 in sacks in, in the country last year. As well as their linebacker uh, J.D. Uh, uh, Bertrand. Who led, who led the team with over a hundred tackles last year. Yeah. And they returned two. they had four pretty good linebackers last year. Um, so they, they did lose one of them. Uh, but Bo Bauer and Jack Kaiser are both returning. So there's, yep. they had a really good defense last year. Notre Dame had a really good defense last year and they are returning a lot of players and they obviously are retaining Marcus Freeman, their defensive coordinator, in a obviously elevated role, but you know what I mean? Like you might see the, the Notre Dame offense, if it can peak, if it can really get going, I think this can be a really good team. Uh, I just have a hard time seeing this team be a really good team in September. Uh, I've said Mm -hmm. it. If, if anyone is joining in now, because this is no, your enemy, because this is maybe you're just now sort of tuning back into the podcast and you haven't listened to us all summer. I've been saying it all summer. I think Notre Dame is going to be a really good team in the second half of the season. I think Ohio state is very fortunate to be playing Notre Dame now. And, and I say that even versus like week three, um, I think Ohio State is very fortunate because uh, I think Notre Dame is a team that needs to a get healthy and B needs a little bit of experience, especially with the running backs and the wide receivers and the quarterback mostly. Um, so I, I do think that Ohio State uh, has a big advantage here as far as getting to play Notre Dame week one. Yep. I think that's a I think that's a huge advantage for Ohio State. And uh, again, we said it, I think, just last week, Kyle, during our national preview. I think Notre Dame is good enough. And I think a lot of this depends upon what they get out of the offense. And when I say what they get out of the quarterback position, and I want to define what I mean by that. I don't strictly mean it's all on Tyler Bookner's shoulders because the offensive line has to block for him. The wide receivers have to run good routes and get open for him. They need to get a run game to support him. So when I say it all depends upon the performance of the quarterback, I don't, I don't mean that it's all on Bookner. I mean, they need to also support him and and allow him to achieve. You know what I'm saying? So depending upon what they get out of the quarterback position this year, and if they can continue to sort of grow and improve, I think it's entirely possible that Notre Dame loses this game and goes on and wins the rest of their games. Mm-hmm. Likely? Uh, uh, I don't know about I don't know about likely. Possible, yeah. yes. Possible, absolutely. And as long mm-hmm. as they don't lose to Ohio State too badly, and with their schedule, I think they could make a case 
if they do run their schedule, to still make the playoffs. Yep. Um, Nomad brings up a good point. Uh, Notre Dame in 2023 next year scares, yes. scares me a lot more than 100. Notre Dame this year. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ohio State's going to turn over a lot of talent next year. Um, but, but Nomad, Nomad, your quarterback will be starting by then. That's Stewart's quarterback. <laughs> oh, Nomad Stewart's. <laughs> um, or Stewart. Or Stewart. Yeah, that's Stewart. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think Ohio State is in danger of losing to Notre Dame next year. And they're obviously in danger of lo- losing to Notre Dame this year, too. Just Notre Dame's good enough to pull an upset, but make no mistake, it would be an upset. Yes. Make no mistake, it would be an upset. Ohio State, I think the current, I think Kyle and I are picking because the CBS scores locked in like last week because of the week zero. So Kyle and I will be picking this game against a 15 and a half point spread, but it's up to 17 and a half now. Yeah. Um, how dare you stereotype all us vets? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, man, I have follow ups to that, but I'm not going to. We'll, we'll talk about that privately. Um, all right, Jared, let's let's get into some of our picks here of our um, of who to watch for key matchups and all that here. So let's. Let's dive into that here. So first question that we always we always uh, ask and answer, who is Ohio State player to watch versus this in this game here? Ohio State player to watch, I think, is Zach Harrison. Um, Ohio State's offense is going to score points like I, I have a lot of respect for this Notre Dame defense uh, schematically, talent wise. Um, but Ohio State is going to score points. Um, if Ohio State has a subpar offensive performance, they'll still score like 35. I feel like that's I feel like a bad offensive game is still like 31, 35 points for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to me, it's all about the defense. It is all about the defense. And if you want to. For Ohio State's defense to be successful, it has to be it has to start from the defensive ends. It has to do with setting the edge on the running game. It has to do with getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, it's all Zach Harrison, in my opinion. Well, not it's not. There's a lot of defensive ends. Uh, it's all. Yeah. It starts with the defensive ends. I'm picking Zach Harrison. He's the senior guy. He's the he's the leader of the group. I'm picking him, but it, it starts with the defensive ends for sure. Yeah, and I'm I'm picking Steel Chambers. But I like I mentioned before, you got a young quarterback and. Typically, young quarterbacks like to go to their big targets, and that's Michael Mayer. So I think I think Steel Chambers and really any of the linebackers that come in too, but I'm just going to pick Steel Chambers here. Got to really keep an eye and keep Michael Mayer to a minimum as possible. He's going to get his catches. He'll get his yardage, but try to keep him to a minimum as much as possible. Yeah, uh, absolutely, uh, and, which uh, is exactly why – my enemy player to watch is Michael Mayer. Again, <laughs> Ohio State's going to well, score well, their points. Before, before you do that, Jared, we have our, did our guest picker mention anything uh, or no? He, he did not. And, I, and it's probably my fault. Um, he gave us a uh, game synopsis, uh, but he didn't give us uh, like player to watch or anything like that. That's probably my fault for not reminding him to do that. So apologize, Cousin Jay. Mm-hmm. Cousin Jay, how you doing, Cousin Jay? Apologies to Cousin Jay. I probably should have uh, reminded you to do that. Mayor. Did you say Meyer? I said Mayor. 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 I said Mayor. Right. So Jared, Jared picks. Uh, Nomad, I'm going to ask you to delete your own post, please. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the correct answer. Thank Jared, you. Yes. The correct answer is yes, Jared. It is Michael Mayer. But just to be different, uh, another person I mentioned, JT uh, Bert- Berterand. Uh, what the linebacker at um, for Notre Dame led the team in tackles last year. He's going to be all over the field trying to trying to chase down Henderson, trying to chase down whatever he can. <laughs> so yeah, but, but I'm the, sorry, Jared, back... Jared's the Jared's the correct answer. It's yeah. it's Michael Mayer, but because once again, Ohio State's going to score their points. Um, and when Ohio State has struggled, um historically speaking it's been against good tight ends 
I mean, uh, and Nomad, this is where you take your 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 talk about 2017 Iowa back out of your pocket. I told you to hold on to that thought, put it in your pocket. This is where you take it back out. Um, Ohio State has historically tr- uh, had trouble with talented pass catching tight ends because Ohio State never throws to their tight ends. It totally escapes their head that other teams can. <laughs> Iowa, Penn State, heard it pronounced like John Mayer. Uh, Esquire, you're not even in the, you're not even in the voice channel. You can't even hear me right now. All right. uh, Key matchup, Jared. I have for my key matchup, surprise, surprise, Notre Dame tight end versus Ohio State linebacker. Uh, Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm going a little more classic Jared, however. I'm going the Notre Dame offensive line versus the Ohio State defensive line. No. I know. It's it's almost... Honestly, like, we need to... You need to not let me do that in the future because it's just a little too easy. Um, But it's... No, uh, no, don't swap that together. Don't say, oh, Ohio State's offensive line versus Notre Dame's defensive line. I, I don't believe that's a key matchup at all, to be honest with you. I don't, I honestly don't at all believe that's a key matchup. That would not be my next go to. If you said, Jared, you can't do the entire line versus the entire line that's cheating. Then I'd probably try and be like. Um, Ohio State's uh, defensive tackles versus Notre Dame's interior, interior offensive linemen. Would you let me get away with that? I can get away with that. OK, I'm getting away with that. All right. All right. Uh, will the offensive line be ready this week or will they have to, or will there be kinks to fix? Um, Hold on I to think they'll thought. be ready enough Hold um, on to that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to that thought for Monday. Um, I think that the offensive line will be fine in most cases. We have to. We're just going to have to see when it comes to short yardage stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. The spread, Jared mentioned that the spread here, we are, we locked in at 15 and a half. That's what CBS locked in a week ago. I know Jared mentioned it's like 17 and a half, even 18 and a half in some places, but 15 and a half is what we're sticking with here. What do you have, Jared? Well, um, 17 or 18 would make me more nervous. It would make me more nervous. Um, but I think even at 17 or 18, I would still take it. I think the number probably ends up being either 18, 20, 21 is about where I think this game finishes. Uh, so therefore, um, I'm going to go Ohio state 49 Notre Dame 20. All right. Because the tradition upholds. And uh, Buckeye Zach, you talked about the offensive line. Will they be ready here? I think there will be some issues. I mean, just that rust to get the season started here. I don't think Ohio State will score as many as we would hope to, but I have the final score of Ohio State winning 38. Notre Dame puts up 24. 38 to 24. That's not a cover. That is not a cover. Kyle choosing Notre Dame in week one. What an awful start to the year. <laughs> no, I'm picking Ohio st- State to win. <laughs> but. But. Yeah, that's right. Give me those Team Jared emotes. Yeah, give me those Team Jared emotes. <laughs> All right. Um, what so did you say uh, the final, what, what did you say the final score was? Uh, 49 to 20. 49 to 20 because some traditions because some traditions need to to stay intact that's true yeah and cousin jay here he says here ohio state explosive offense new and improved defense i don't see this offense being slowed down very much this season buckeyes cover 45 to 24 hey that's i like that that's just one less touchdown than what i what i projected so if they get that extra touchdown and cover i'm I'm not going to be mad for for losing the spread. <laughs> one one more touchdown. Yeah, one more touchdown. Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he has Buckeyes cover 45 to 24. So that is Cousin Jay and Jared 
picking Ohio State to win and cover. And I have Ohio State winning, but Notre Dame to cover just barely. Okay. Kyle, we have some Ask Sloopcast questions, including the return of everyone's favorite, uh, Austin's over-unders. Uh, and then we have a couple Nomad questions as well. And then I think uh, I think we'll be done. Sure. So let's get through this. Uh, Stroud, CJ Stroud passing yards, over-under 357 and a half yards. Um, hmm. I'm going to say under. I'm going to say under Ohio State's wanting to wanting to establish that running game. They're going to give Henderson a lot more carries. I think Henry, I think Stroud will get over 300 yards, but I'll pick under the 357. Um, I think that is, I'm going to say that the defensive backs with all due respect to the uh, transfer safety from, uh, from Northwestern. I do think that the defensive backs are probably the weakest link of the Notre Dame defense. So Ohio State might want to really, really establish the run, and they probably hopefully can establish the run. But ultimately, it's, you know, force force the safeties to come up a bit with a couple of runs and then just take the top off. Yep. Um, and I think they'll once they start taking it off, it's it's all coming off. Oh, so uh, I'm going Stroud <laughs> over uh, 357 and a half. All right. Ohio State team sacks three and a half. Uh, it's got to be over, especially with an inexperienced quarterback. Um, again, like the, the, the real strength of the Notre Dame offensive line is the interior. So mm -hmm. you might be able to get after the tackles some. Um, and a, again, an inexperienced he, quarterback who thinks he can get stuff done on his feet is typically yeah. who you get the most sacks against. Yeah, I mean, you can look at it the other way, too, that may not get as many sacks because he is mobile and two, maybe getting rid of the ball pretty quick to his big target tight end. Uh, getting ball, but, of, getting rid of the ball quick is not what young quarterbacks do well. No, and that's why I'm picking the over as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ohio State forced turnovers at two and a half. I'm ooh, I'm going to go over as well. I'll go over here. Always early in the season, there's always mistakes. There's fumbles. I feel I feel like Ohio State will get a good amount of turnovers in this game. Yeah, I feel like this is as it typically is with Austin, a perfect number. Um, this is this is the number I'd least want to pick against. Uh, again, I have to. I'm going to have to once again play like the young, inexperienced quarterback. Again, who's mobile, who might try and run his way out of some stuff that he should, you know, that he will learn in time to just throw the ball away on. But because he's young, because he's inexperienced, he might scramble when he thinks he can outrun the defensive end, but can't. Uh, he mm -hmm. might scramble and try and force a ball in where he should have thrown the ball away. This is what young quarterbacks do. Um, yep, yep. So I think this is I think there's a potential for high number turnovers in this game. All right. Ohio State players with a reception seven and a half. I'm going to go. I'm going to go under that. That seems really high. Well, I, I say players with yeah, a reception. Yeah, I, would say, I would say under. Yeah. With a reception. Yeah. I'm going to go under. I'll go under as well. I don't think this is a game where you yep. see it get so out of control that a lot of young players get in. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm going to go under on that one. All right. Trey, Trey rushing yards, 128 and a half. Over. And I, will also, I will also go over. Want to establish that, want to establish that running game. They'll be pushing 150 here. Hickman with total tackles at seven and a half. I'm going to go That's under. That's interesting. I'm going to go under with that one. Um, With him playing the deep safety position, I don't think... It was when it was yeah. different when he was playing the up safety. It was different when he was playing the hybrid linebacker safety. That's when he got a lot of those tackles because mm -hmm. you want that. That's a guy who's supposed to get tackles. But if he's supposed to be playing the last man, you know, the you last man on the defense, the deep safety, the... I don't think you want him given seven and a half tackles. No, maybe set that at three and a half. No, I would definitely <laughs> go over on three and a half. Um, by the way, it might go over. It's just, I don't think that's a good sign for Ohio state. If it does, 
but I'm, I'm yeah. still going to say under, although I, once again, I'll say that's probably, that's a real solid number. All right. Last one here, Jared, Ohio state offensive third down percentage at 58 and a half percent. Over. I'll say over. That's, that's a good number. That's probably one of his better number over unders here. I'll, I'll go over too. Yeah, uh, we have a more experienced quarterback. We have, ve- I mean, come on. Who who are they going to go to on third downs most often? It's, it, it, come on, everyone say it for me. Yeah, that's right. It's JSN. You, you're not going to stop JSN when it, when it, you know, if it's third and seven, you know it's going to go to JSN. And right when you know, right when you absolutely know for sure that's what's going to happen, that's when you get Marvin Harrison single covered and you get him on a quick slant route. And that's also a free first down. Yeah. All right. We got to finish it up here, Jared. We got a pair of questions from one of our, one of our mods here. Nomad. All right. Question all right, he all right. asks, what scares you the most about the Notre Dame game? To me, to me, it's, it's the unknown for the defense. We keep hearing about, the changes we keep hearing about, Oh, the improvements of the defense and the defense is playing with their, the hair on fire. It's, it's a very chaotic type of defense and it's this and that. And we don't, we, we never know. We, we don't know until we see it on the field here. I, I keep hearing great things and I really hope to he- everything I'm hearing is true, but you just never know until they hit the field. That, that's probably what scares me the most is, What's the improvement from the defense? Yeah. Um, first off, I think Kyle's right. Although I will say also, Kyle, it's a bit of a cheat just to pick the entire defense. No, 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 no. Just saying. Um, I'm, I really want to see what the offensive line is capable of. I feel like that's the biggest unknown on the offense. And I think we're all sort of depending upon the offense to carry a lot of the water, especially through September through the first part of October while the defense gets like real game experience with this new system. Like I think the offense needs to be one of the best, if not the best in the country again, especially like I said, through the first half of the season or so. Um, And that always, always, always starts up front running backs, a plus quarterback, a plus wide receivers, a plus offensive line. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Last, qu- last question Nomad has here. How many drinks will Gangland have on Saturday? Hmm. You should have given a hey, Nomad uh, over under, buddy. Give us a give us an over under on that. He's typing four and a half, four and a half shots. shots over. I'll go over. under. I'll go under. But it's a good number. Don't, don't Nomad. Nomad. Don't don't disappoint me. <laughs> no, it was, you mean gangland don't disappoint you. Yes, gangland. Sorry. All right, that's it, Jared. That is all the questions. That is the return of Know Your Enemy. That is the return to Know Your Enemy. Um, Kyle, I think I think this is about the time we want to hit on this show. Um, so everyone, uh, we have uh we're posting highlights to TikTok and Instagram and YouTube shorts. Be sure to check all of those out. Um and that's that's it. That's all the plugging I feel like doing right now. If, you, if you're looking for any of our links, if you're looking for any of our social media pages, our merch stores, our Discord servers, if you're looking for any any of that stuff, you can just go to the uh, and you will find all of our links there. So just just head, o- head on over to the and you'll find all of our links. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I think we might have just missed this in our last recording, but Sony Styles, black stripe removed. Yeah, we, we just missed that in the last recording. Or no, well, the, that was our, we just missed it in our Sleep Cats only recording. Yeah. So the general so, public doesn't know about that. That's a secret. Yeah. Sony Styles. Yep. Sony Styles. We keep hearing a lot of great things about him. Yeah. Really, really excited to see what he has as a Boom. Buckeye down the road. Absolutely. Um, very, very, very excited for Sonny Styles. Um, I don't know how much of him we see this year outside of maybe special teams. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm very excited to, to see what his future is going to be like here at Ohio state for sure. 
All right. Anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it. That's it. All right. Played them on Monday. Played them on Tuesday. Going to play them again here because we're doing it all week. Uh, the New Bomb Turks, uh, uh, early 90s punk band from the uh, Ohio State campus. Uh, once again, they were called the New Bomb Turks. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and, su- and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the New Bomb Turks.